Today we're going to teach you a bunch about creating content using Blender and After Effects. I'm going to recreate this visualizer here, Young Blue Can't Help Who You Love. Now making an entire 3D project can be time consuming, that's why I like making a lot of these smaller visualizers. If you guys want to save even more time with this, I recommend checking out the sponsor of today's video, Motion Array. I've been using Motion Array templates recently to help save time and match the aesthetic of whatever project I'm working on. For example, if I'm working on a product, commercial, or even music video project, I'll hop into Blender and then work on some custom scenes, and then I'll browse through Motion Array and try and find some motion graphics to complement and transition with my renders. This has been a lifesaver for speeding up my creative process. Motion Ray has tens of thousands of different theme templates, so I can easily just plug those Motion Ray assets into any part of my workflow. I'm personally making YouTube videos, client videos, music videos. There's a lot of different variety in there, so it's nice to have something like Motion Ray where I can find anything I need, apply it to those different projects, and save me a ton of time. I've also been using these in a lot of different creative ways. These assets are not just all utility. Just from browsing through some of their color LUTs, I found three different unique music video looks like this chromatic color grade and this fantasy pack. In the past, I tried to achieve this by using color keys and masking, and now I can just drag and drop this, so it's very nice to have. If you guys want to check it out, you can use my code at the top of the description to get $50 off a yearly subscription. The 3D portion of this is very simple. There's no complex animation or shading. So if you are new to Blender, this is a great place to start. So let's get started here. As always, if you're new, subscribe for more tutorials and leave a like if you enjoy. So first off, we're going to need a 3D character as our centerpiece. I recommend you guys download the software Daz 3D. It's free. There's a marketplace with a ton of free assets as well as paid assets. So I'm going to go over to the smart content tab and load in a figure. Once you have the character loaded in, you can go to the wardrobe section to also add any clothes that you'd like. I'm keeping this short and sweet, so we're all done within Daz. We just need to bring this over to Blender, and you can do this easily with the Daz to Blender bridge. I'll leave a guide below so you can get that up and running if you need to. So in Blender, again, we're going to use the Daz to Blender bridge plugin. All I have to do is click here to import in our Daz character, and then I'm going to change over to the rendered shading mode to start working on the lighting. This is very simple. I'll just click Shift A and add in a simple backlight setup by placing an area light behind the subject like this. Next, I'm going to duplicate that light by clicking Shift D. And to make this a lot easier, let's select this new light, go over to the Constraints tab, and then I'm going to add a Track to Constraint. Now you can select your Daz character if you want, but I recommend instead you click Shift A and create a new empty. That way your light will always point towards your empty and you have a lot more control. So let's delete the Daz sun here so that we can get this nice sort of cinematic lighting. And that's about it for the lighting. This is why I love these 3D visualizers. You can keep things extremely simple in the 3D software just to give you the structure to work off of. And then later we can polish everything in After Effects. Speaking of effects, let's show you how we can make this skeleton slash zoom through effect. Now this is actually a lot easier than it sounds. We just need to download a skeleton model. I found this one for free on Turbo Squid. If you want, you can also download a heart model here or anything else you want to put in this look. Once you have that, let's import that skeleton 3D model into Blender. And then I'm going to position the skeleton and the skull over top of our character. You can make the lining up a lot easier by switching to wireframe mode. Once you have that all sorted, you can also add some simple materials to our skeleton. Now, if you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled and the model you downloaded came with the textures included, just switch over to the shader editor, select the principal shader and click Control Shift T. Then select all of the image maps that came with your download and Blender will load them all in for you. If you want to add a custom shader like this x-ray look, for example, you can easily do this by adding a Fresnel node into the alpha channel, as well as an RGB to allow you to choose your color into the base color and emission. For the actual transition part, we're going to do that within After Effects with masking, so we don't have to worry about that here. You also don't need to do any tracking because our character is not moving, which is very nice. If you need to switch to edit mode and delete any unnecessary parts of the skeleton, you can also add other details like a custom chain for example, for that I'm using my Director 3D Blender plugin, which I made specifically for music videos. That plugin includes 3D models, lighting setups, effects, and templates like this 3D custom chain creator, which can help speed this process up. Obviously, it's not needed. You can still create everything from scratch. But if you are making a ton of visualizers and you're interested in the plugin, I'll leave it in the description. 
So we're almost done in Blender. We just need to add a simple camera animation to finish up. Let's click Shift A and add in a camera. And then I'm gonna go up to the object properties of the camera and set a keyframe for the location. I'm gonna scroll on the timeline and then adjust the location values to zoom into the heart. Again, make sure you lock in that keyframe to finalize the animation. So we now have a basic animation of the camera, but it looks really bad right now. So let's switch over to the graph editor workspace with that camera selected. You guys can click N on your keyboard to show the modifiers. From here, you can select any of these movement values and add in a noise modifier. Modifier. You can then adjust the settings to add in some realistic handheld movement to our animation. You can also adjust or smooth out the keyframes directly from the graph editor to give you even more control over the movement of the camera. Learning the graph editor is extremely useful. For example, I can again select the heart model that I placed here and in the graph editor I can add some simple keyframes of the heart scaling up and then add a cycles modifier to create this sort of heartbeat look where all I have to do to adjust the heartbeat timing is move this keyframe over. So now all of our animation is finished. We're done in Blender. All we need to do is render these out and we're going to create two renders here, one with only the character showing and one with only the skeleton showing. So make sure you're using your viewport and render visibility switches to do this. Render both of those out and then we're going to hop into After Effects to finish up. All right, guys, so in After Effects, first off, you want to right click in your project bin and go to import multiple files. Go ahead and navigate to wherever you exported your Blender renders and we're going to click import and then done. So now we should have our full animation. Do the same with the skeleton portion. We'll go to right click, import multiple files. Here's where I exported the skeleton part. I'll import that and then click done. So we can now drag the skeleton render into this main composition. Let me just rename this to main and we'll drag the skeleton as a layer below. Here's what this animation looks like. And you see if I toggle the visibility, these are both perfectly synced. So now we just need to create a mask to actually create the transition. For that, I'm gonna go over here and create a new composition. I'm gonna name this one transition and click OK. And for this, we're just going to go up in the top left to wherever the shapes are. You can click and hold and select the ellipse tool right here. I'm just going to drag and draw a circle like this. And then in the options for this circle, we're going to go over to fill. I'm going to change the color of this over to black. And then we're going to go back over to the transform for the circle. And we're going to set a keyframe for the scale. So we'll start that at zero and then we'll click to set the keyframe and then we'll drag for how long we want this transition to be. So this is around two seconds. Once we've done that, we're just going to bump this up something like this. And you see, we already have that keyframe enabled. So now we just have a animation where the circle grows. So if you want to stylize this a bit, we can go over to our effects and presets and I'm going to search up a turbulent displace effect. We can drag this onto our shape layer and you can use that to sort of stylize the edges a bit more. We can also add in a Gaussian blur and we'll just bump that up a bit just to sort of soften those edges. So here is our transition layer. Let's go back to our main comp and we're going to drag in the transition composition that we just created. So we'll place this as a layer above everything else and transform and fit this to the comp size. So now all we need to do is select our character layer here, click toggle switches and modes so that you can actually see this track mat dropdown. We're going to select the track mat and go to transition. And now you can see we have what we are doing. We just need to invert it. So just click this switch right here to invert that alpha mat. And now you have your X-ray transition effect. So very easy, just with a tiny little After Effects mask and some simple things within Blender. If you want from here, you can further customize this. If you want to limit where the mask is going, you can just add in a second mask like this. Now you'll be able to fully control the spread of everything as well as the timing of everything. From here, you can use After Effects to color grade, any, add any other effects, any other custom touches that you would like. Again, I mainly just want to get the core components of the workflow across to you guys. I feel like once you have an understanding of that, how to use Blender for the simple bones of this, literally and metaphorically speaking, you guys can use your imagination to create whatever it is that you want. As always, thank you guys for watching. If there's any other visualizer or music video you want me to break down next, comment that down below. Other than that, have a good week and I'll see you guys in the next one.